Well, according to some realtors in Muskoka, Ontario's cottage country, some cottage owners who bought during the pandemic are now struggling to unload those properties. And as interest rates drive down prices, our next guest says cottages located on less popular lakes and listed under one and a half million dollars are particularly vulnerable to price corrections, saying they could drop by 30 percent in value next year. For more on this, let's bring in John Fincham, broker at REMAX Perry Sound Muskoka Realty. John, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. It looks like you could possibly be in cottage country right now. You've got a nice background there <laughs> to you, John. Uh, but yeah. give, us a, give us a bit of a sense of what you're seeing in your region. Well, as my dad would say, it's, it's tough sledding out there right now. Um, uh, that pandemic pandemic surge is really, um, really starting to dissipate quick. And uh, the listing numbers are, are going up every day. Um, and the buyers are, are really skittish for good reason. So uh, listings, I mean, it, they were hard to come by during the pandemic, or at least people were quite, there was a huge appetite <laughs> for, for what was out there. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and now it's completely flipped. And uh, you've got a combination of um, folks that bought during the pandemic uh, that, that decided maybe cottage life wasn't for them or moving up here wasn't for them. And you've got the interest rates on top of that, which are really wreaking havoc with folks. Um, a lot of people bought on lines of credit and uh, it's really, really difficult for them now. Oh, interesting. So not even taking out a, a, a separate mortgage, just dipping into a line of credit in order to buy. Exactly. And their primary asset has, has devalued to a point as well. So it's sort of a double whammy. What they, what they bought is not worth as much and what they leveraged to buy that is not worth as much. So that combination is, 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 is rough. And then sure. quite possibly paying a variable rate on that line of credit at the same time. Exactly. But strangely or interestingly enough, it hasn't affected the the luxury market um, uh, appreciably at all. Um, anything north of three million, it's a robust market still. But I think it's because those buyers don't go hat in hand to the bank. They just write a check. So the interest rate doesn't have the same bearing. Uh, on them. Yeah, we're looking at one of your graphs now that's showing us uh, the over 3 million properties, and this is the number of units sold. And so it looks like we're looking at around 60 or so, just under 60. Um, is that just 60 uh, uh, sales in, in that particular month or in the latest exactly. month of data? Okay. And exactly. Down from a high of around 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you look, if you look at the under three million uh, yep. graph, we got that one up now. Yep. Yeah, that, that's that's a rough graph. Yeah, it still looks uh, like the majority of sales though are are, are happening with uh, you know that under three million category. You're still looking at mm, a little under five hundred or so. Yeah, historically still quite, uh, quite low. a remarkable drop. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. You know, it's down about 8% roughly. That's the published numbers. But as the percentage of sales are in the luxury category, it's skewing those median and average prices that are published mm. significantly. Um, so you want to take those numbers with a grain of salt. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff out there that's that's down an awful lot more than 8%. So those are the sales that are actually happening. But as, as you said, listings are are really increasing. What are you finding when somebody lists? Are they just sitting and, and waiting for quite some time? Well, a lot of them can't. Um, you know, they're strapped. Mm. So it's and a lot of them are underwater it's it's not a good situation for them i'm getting a lot of calls for spring listings and in all price points and the challenge is going to be you have to educate the the seller and and other and agents as well for that matter that this isn't 2021 anymore they're going to have to adjust their their thinking to to the current situation or it's just going to sit there on the market yeah, how are many uh, prospective sellers approaching it? Do you find that they're coming in thinking, I'm going to offload this property for the price that I paid for it or somewhere around there? And just how different is the reality that you think that they're facing? Yeah, I think that you have to be very um, 
and just tell them like it is and and show them the charts and say, you know, you, you're going to lose on this. Uh, there's no question. It's just how to mitigate that loss as best you can. I think you have to be upfront and frank with them because you're doing them a disservice by by quoting unrealistic numbers. And what about uh, buyers right now, John? Who Who is stepping up right now? Who is able to to buy or interested in buying a second property? Yeah, that's a that's a shrinking that's a shrinking group for sure right now. Um, I think once again, it's a dichotomy. So the people in the luxury market are still out there, and I think the foreign buyers ban is going to keep that strong because um, it doesn't cover cottage country. Uh, I deal in Muskoka and Perry Sound, so it's not up here, and so they can't invest in in real estate in the big centers. They're going to come north. But they're not looking for you know the eight hundred thousand dollar cottage on a small lake. They're looking for a you know a sizable investment. So I think that's going to keep the the luxury category very strong. Um, yeah. But once again, it's 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 rough for the average cottage owner.